Uh oh. Did Tulsi Gabbard go and sit down with Wall Street tycoons and ask them for money? Did she break her promise? No big pack money, no Wall Street money? Well, I don't know, man. There's a story breaking today. Let's find out if it's sure or not. Tulsi Gabbard, amid Hillary Clinton tussle, hits Wall Street fat cat syndicate. Now, it doesn't say that Tulsi Gabbard took took the money, but let's read. Tulsi Gabbard, fresh off her nasty tussle with former First uh, Lady Secretary of State and 2016 nominee Hillary Clinton, <laughs> as, if we, as if she needs an introduction, was given a hero's welcome at a meeting with Wall Street executives and potential donors on Wednesday evening in New York City that took place at a- Anthony Scaramucci's uh, Hunt and Fish Club restaurant, Fox News has learned. Uh, Telsey has not pushed back. It's already 12 hours, so it seems that um, the story is true. Now, is it a is it a bad thing for Tulsi Gabbard? Is Tulsi Gabbard playing a little chess of her own, going and sitting down with the Wall Street and seeing what the hell they want? I don't know, but let's just let's just hear her. Let's hear out the story before we come to a conclusion. Because sometimes sitting down with the with the enemy is a good thing, right? You know, you have to know thy enemy, right? Keep your keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Right? That's the deal, man. Keep your eye on your enemy. Keep your foot on their throat. Right? Ah, you smile, you go, you eat that fish and chips. I don't fucking who cares. Right? It's just a day out. All right, but we'll find out. So Skirmucci, known as the Mooch, is a hedge fund screen um hedge fund salesman and short lived communications director of the Trump administration before flaming out and transforming himself into a fierce Trump critic. <laughs> he ain't no fierce Trump critic. Uh, he's, he's, he's just playing the other side of the, uh, other side of the Kern. Right? Because, uh, because Tulsi Gabbard is powerful right now. Tulsi Gabbard has got, you know, is kicking Hillary Clinton in a, in a cunt. And, uh, if she's threatening a third party run, that's all oh, devastating, right? Because look, if they screw, look, if they screw Bernie Sanders again, in this Democratic primary, right? If they cheat, right? They're already doing it, but if they overtly cheat where they're rigging machines and all that, they're rigging everything, the polling and all that stuff leading up to the primary, but if they overtly cheat and people get that sense again that they've been cheated in the last hour of the uh, primary, then they'll all defect to third party. Now, if Tulsi Gabbard is so bold, because she's not going to be the nominee, Democrats will never nominate Tulsi Gabbard. She's already called them liars and cheaters, right? They're just not going to do it, right? No matter what the polls say, no matter what the election says, Tulsi Gabbard will not be the Democratic uh, uh, candidate. But Tulsi Gabbard would be in an enormous position to run as a third party candidate. Yes, she would, because 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 she would take all of the you know all of the disgruntled uh, Sanders people. Right and and rally them into a third party. Now, can a third party win in the United States of America right now under the current situation, under the current Republican and Democratic control of the electoral process? Absolutely fucking not. No, it can't happen. It it can't happen. It won't happen because everything is cheating from the top down. Right? No governor mansion. No no mayorship. No. No election committee in a state is going gonna, is gonna to throw an election to a third party. They will cheat, especially the Democrats, proven cheaters. Well, the Republicans, well, they're proven cheaters too, but uh, there is no but. There's no way that a state would roll over and hand an election, even if the people voted that way, to a third party. Not going to happen under the current situation. Could it happen in the future? Yeah, it could. So, so that's the threat that Tulsi Gabbard holds right now if she goes to mil- billionaires and they give her a bunch of money they could be thinking well they want trump right they ultimately want trump they want things to stay the same they don't want the instability of some some lefty democrat coming in like uh, elizabeth warren that's uncertain and they definitely absolutely can have a bernie sanders who's going to basically eliminate the you know, the healthcare industrial complex, he's going to deflate the military industrial complex. He's going to get money out of politics. He's going to, he's going to tax the shit out of the billionaires. They don't, they can't have Bernie Sanders. They'll tolerate Elizabeth Warren, but they'll, they'll settle for, for a Donald Trump where everything stays the same because they like Trump. It's good for, it's good for business, right? They get all the breaks. 
the the you know the working class and the middle class get shit on. It's perfect for a billionaire. Uh, so, so, um, so they have an interest. So if they fund Tulsi Gabbard to do a third party, <laughs> right? Because if you have a third party di- diluting um, diluting uh, 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 the Democrats, then you have a winner. You have a winner in Trump. Because uh, Tulsi Gabbard's not going to pull the Republican side of things. It's just not going to happen, right? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's far less... Tulsi Gabbard will pull far less votes as a, as a third-party runner, will pull far less votes from Trump than she will from the Democrats. Now, the other scenario of that is if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination... Which it it still seems impossible that 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 they'll allow that to happen, but if Bernie Sanders should get that nomination, maybe under the threat that Tulsi Gabbard will run independently, uh, maybe it's a good strategy, right? It's Bern, it's Tulsi, ah, oh, fuck you, I'm running independent, and then the Democrats have absolutely no chance without uh, of a win, right? Tulsi Gabbard running third party with a shit sandwich, Joe Biden as a Democratic nominee, and Trump. <laughs> Who do you think wins that that scenario? The independent who can't win because of the system, the Democrat who nobody's going to vote for and can't cheat their way into victory with a shit sandwich like Joe Biden who can't put 12 people in front of him, or Donald Trump, the sitting president of the United States. It's a no-brainer. Now, the other scenario is if Bernie is the nominee, now that's a game-changer. Tulsi Gabbard, in my view, would would lay down, would not run... Uh, a third party uh, run if Bernie Sanders is the nominee. No way. Right? So, Democrats, pay attention, right? You can't win. If you pick Joe Biden or, or Elizabeth Warren, what's going to happen is Tulsi Gabbard defects to the third party and, and destroys, takes half your crowd. Takes half your crowd because you fucked over Bernie Sanders, right? And Bernie could, Bernie could say whatever he wants. Bernie could go. You know, kiss Elizabeth Warren's ass and say, "No, oh, we have to, we have to defeat Trump." He can do that all he wants, right? Because that's what Bernie does. Bernie is just, you know, he's a he's a he's a good-hearted guy who doesn't know how to go negative. But that doesn't stop Tulsi Gabbard from absolutely destroying, destroying the Democrats because that's really what we want. We need that to happen. So more back. So the, what does that have to do with Tulsi Gabbard taking money from the fat cats? Right? Did she take money from the fat cats? Because that's how the that's how everybody's gonna view this. She's sitting down with Scaramucci and and the and the and the dirty you know dirty billionaire fucks on Wall Street. Why they're treating treating a nice, treating it to a big steak dinner? Hey Tulsi, yeah, we love Tulsi. Yeah, come on in, Tulsi. Why? Because Tulsi Gabbard, if she if she has the cash, and uh, the Democrats fuck her, which they are doing. She runs third party, so it becomes obvious. So Scaramucci, while he was, uh, wasn't was in attendance uh, at this uh, sh- sit-down, while Scaramucci wasn't in attendance, according to people with direct knowledge of the event, about two dozen Wall Street executives sat for the off-the-record meeting. Off the record? <laughs> well, it's not off the record anymore. Now it's on the record. Meeting with Gabbard that was hosted by Robert Wolf. Himself a prominent Wall Street Democrat, golfing buddy of former Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, and past chief, uh, past chief of Swiss Bank, UBS. Uh, so he's a banker, he's a golfer with Obama, billionaire. Uh, Wolf now runs investment advisory firm, 32 advisors, and does political consulting. Right, so Tulsi is a rock star, said one Wall Street heavy hitter who attended. She's warm and smart. People in the room love her. Mmm, stroke her. Gabbard's cozying up to Wall Street fat cat set comes as uh, she recently made headlines for a spat with Clinton, who referred to to the political Democratic presidential nominee uh, as the favorite of Russia. We know that story. We know all about that. Clinton didn't directly name Gabbard, but we know about that. So, so, uh, indeed, Gabbard and Clinton have long-butted heads Gabbard resigned in 2016 as vice chair of the DNC to support Bernie Sanders' upstart campaign. Yeah, that's right. She did that. She dropped out of the DNC. Remember that? And uh, under Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and then ultimately the uh, Donna Brazile uh, came in and 
cheated some more for them. Right? So Tulsi Gabbard gets points for that. Right? And, uh, and now, as her campaign for the 2020 Democratic nomination, until possibly the recent Clinton dust-up has gotten a little traction, party insiders believe she is poised to shake up the race even further by running as a third-party candidate that would weaken any eventual candidate to oppose President Trump. Absolutely. Right? That's the move, man. That's your power move. That's your power play, Tulsi. Use it. In the same comments, Clinton also so that's so that makes uh, that becomes understandable. Why would the billionaires want to talk to Tulsi Gabbard? Because they they want to fuel Democratic anger, fuel that that resentment, that anger, rekindle the whole thing, so that the working class and the middle class of this country gets totally screwed. Even if Tulsi Gabbard is fighting for for the righteousness of Americans and to de-escalate the wars. They can, they can, they can uh, shut her down by having her run as an independent and never getting elected. It's just a talking head, right? And nobody's going to pay attention to a third-party runner anyway. She's not going to be on the national debate stage. It's going to be Trump and shit sandwich Joe Biden, right? You're not even going to hear Tulsi's voice, just like they did with uh, Jill Stein. Will Tulsi Gabbard take over the Green Party as a, as a third-party runner? Well, that would be the only smart move because otherwise she, she won't get any ballot access. She won't get anything. She just, you know, to run, to declare yourself as a third party, you won't be on the ballot. But if you take over the, the Green Party, right, step aside, Jill Stein. You're not, you know, come on, step aside, right? Give it to, give it to Tulsi Gabbard who has the, the momentum and the breath and the, and the strength, the 38-year-old military woman. Let her run the, run the game, right? Bold, able to speak her mind, calling Hillary Clinton a cunt and a and a and a and a rigor, uh, and a liar. So, Clinton's comments were that. <clears throat> In response, Gabbard lashed out, calling Clinton the queen of the war moments. So let's watch this video here. So here's the spin from Fox Business. Uh, Couple of minutes. Charlie Gasparito joins us in the newsroom. There's a um, some Tulsi Gabbard uh, reporting here. We've had all this back and forth, Tulsi Gabbard and Hillary Clinton. But what about the meeting she had on uh, on Wall Street? What do you know? Well, it's not just that, Connell. It's it's the it's the fight with the Democratic Party establishment. She's an outsider. She's not doing very well in the in the primary right now. But she is an outsider. She had this. She is doing well in the primary. She's she's getting more attention than anybody else for the right reasons. If you look at the polls, if you're leaning on the fake polls, well, then she's not doing well in the primary. You see how the polling, the fake polling, affects the 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 spin? That's why they do it. Rig the polling. Everybody leans on the polling, and they say, ah, see, she's not doing so well in the primary. She's doing very well. For an unknown this early in the game, she's doing outstanding. Probably, who knows, if you did a, a national poll of Tulsi Gabbard, you probably get her around fifteen percent, I think twenty. And as we move forward, if you gave her a you know legitimate, so that's not true that she's not doing well in the primary. She's doing very well. This big fight with Hillary Clinton, uh, exchanges that that were pretty nasty. Also, there is widespread speculation in the Democratic Party that she's going to run as a third a third party candidate that would hurt whoever, obviously, whoever would, would eventually become the nominee. As all this is going on, Fox Business has learned that Gabbard was in New York City last night for a private meeting with Wall Street executives and possible donors. Um, this meeting occurred at Anthony Scaramucci's Hunt and Fish Club. Hmm. It was spot possible donors. Right? She hasn't taken a dime. She's surveying the she's surveying the land. She's she's looking out over the battlefield, and saying, "Where am I going to get burnt?" That's all. It's just she's she, she's not she has not taken the money, for the fact, for the record. Sponsored by uh, Robert Wolf, who, as you know, is a Fox Business contributor, but also a prominent Democratic uh, Party fundraiser, also a guy that's part of the establishment, which raised some raised some eyebrows. Also, we should point out Bob is himself a Wall Street executive, runs both a private advisory firm, used to be the CEO of UBS Americas, but he also has some sort of a political uh, firm, advisory firm that he does on the side with Anthony Scaramucci. So this all occurred last night. It was a private function. It was attended by about two dozen Wall Street executives, uh, these are potential donors. They will likely be hit up for contributions. 
uh, by the by the by the Gabbard com campaign at some point, I am told, um, and it did raise a lot of eyebrows. Now, apparently, she did not attack Hillary Clinton during this meeting, uh, and she really did impress the Wall Street folks. If you look at Tulsi Gabbard on policy, she's kind of all over the place. She's um, pro Second Amendment, pro guns, right. uh, uh, nominally at least nominally. She's uh, you know against foreign intervention in wars. I mean, she she follows some. She has some of the same sort of policy positions, I guess you could say, as Donald Trump, which is maybe why uh, Trump is uh, patting her on the back so much with their fight. So you're with saying Hillary. they think she might run third party for real? Yes. And, you know, here's the other thing that's very fascinating, because I've, I've been asking Democratic Party people about this. You know, the Robert Wolf uh, sort of uh, connection here is interesting, because he's generally an establishment candidate. Like a Biden guy. Yeah, I, I, I believe he's a Biden guy. You got to ask him. He's on our air enough. Um, but if he's supporting Biden, why is he supporting a third party? Or why is he doing something that might help a third party candidate, which would hurt the uh, the, the the front the, the Democratic Party nominee? The answer to that is because it it de it derails Bernie Sanders. They all know that. See, they all know that the Wall Street Wall Streeters say one thing and they mean another. Right? They know that the real threat is is the Sanders. Democratic socialism that that deflates Wall Street, they know that. So if they favor they favor Biden because he can't win, then Trump wins and everything stays the same. Now to as a kind of a hedge, you take a third party candidate because whenever a third party candidate runs, it usually is stems out of the Democratic Party. Whenever an independent runs, is usually a, a spinoff of the. Of the uh, of the Democratic Party, that's generally the case. You could make an argument that the uh, that the uh, Libertarians are are a spinoff of the Republican Party, but for the most part, people like um, like uh, Ralph Nader was the spoiler of two thousand two thousand election. Remember when they called you know? So so you understand what's going on, right? So that the 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 Wall Street people are hedging their bets. So that they get Trump, yeah. Support Biden because he can't win. All right, that's a good one. Get Bernie Sanders out of the picture, and then hedge it with a third party run with Tulsi Gabbard. This is not me saying this. These are Democratic activists that I and and, and strategists that I spoke to today in the wake of this meeting. Uh, we will have a full report on this on FoxBusiness.com shortly, which okay. raises some of these issues. We should point out that Mr. Wolf had no comment. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard's campaign had no comment. Fair enough. I want to talk to you a little bit because you've done so much reporting yes. on Mike Bloomberg and whether he'll run. Seems like uh... yeah, who cares about him? So this is uh, just to get a, a sense of who Scaramucci is. Scaramucci actually is uh, for uh, tax relief for the middle class. Just briefly. Steve Forbes here. Uh, hi, any, hi, any, Steve. Any, any speculation on uh, what you think uh, the Republicans should do in terms of going on offense about Mueller, in terms of going on offense, on offense about taxes, like having a radical tax proposal? Well, I mean, you, you and I would... Forbes is saying a radical tax proposal, and Scaramucci is actually for... Uh, a middle class tax cut that would stimulate the economy from the bottom up. He says it right here. Totally agree on the radical tax proposal. I think I think we, you know, the president was talking about a phase two of the taxes uh, prior to the midterms, where he has to offer more tax relief to the middle class and lower middle income communities. Um, I think if he does that, that's sort of the third leg of the stool. Uh, you and I, uh, people like Steve Moore, understand that you can actually get the economic growth, Stephen, without a lot of inflation. Uh, and if he were to simplify the tax code for those people, and I know he wants to do that, he's just not sure if he can get it through the, the Congress, the way the Congress is configured right now, uh, that would probably stabilize us in the three zone, 3% zone on GDP. So I love the way Scaramucci says if you give those people, those people are 99% of the country. You see how they, they defend themselves? Like it's only, it's, it's a, he's a typical billionaire. And he's, he's hedging. They often do that. He's playing the other side of it. Yeah, yeah, give, give the poor people a, a tax break. It'll stimulate the economy. But does he really mean it? Does he really mean it? Is Trump going to actually be able to do that? Who the hell knows, right? But what, what was sure is that the, the corporations got their break. So that's who Scaramucci is. And uh, so Marcus Conti reporting. Did Tulsi Gabbard uh, do the right thing sitting down with the, with the Wall Street fat cats? Because that's going to be the spin of the day. Well, nonetheless, whatever whatever happens here is that Tulsi Gabbard is shaking the motherfucker up. 
Elsie Gabbard is shaking up the race. She is now leading the narrative. Right? This is good stuff, right? Because, look, I, I told you all along, if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, is the nominee for the Democratic Party, then Bernie Sanders will be the president of the United States, and Trump will have been a one-term president. That is the statistical fact. Right? That is the fact based on my facts. So Bernie Sanders, if he's the nominee, he will, he will be the president. He will defeat Trump. Anybody else will fail. A third party cannot win in the United States of America because of the corrupt system, the way things are rigged. So, um, so we will find out. Uh, we'd like to hear Tulsi Gabbard kindly make a little video and tell us what you learned at the billionaire sit-down with a dozen Wall Streeters, two dozen Wall Streeters, and uh, how is your stake and, and, and surf and turf and... Uh, did you? Uh, did they love you? Did they laugh? Did they laugh at all your jokes? Did they offer you any money? Did they speculate? Did they ask you, are you going to run third party? Tulsi Gabbard now needs to step up to the plate and make a cute little video and tell us what the hell is going on. What's the strategy? Right? What's the strategy, Tulsi? Uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to announce, of course. You don't want to say now that you're running third party, but you've already said that... Uh, that they're screwing you, that the that the DNC is rigged, right? She's already on the record saying that. She's already gave Hillary Clinton the cunt kick for uh, accusing her of being a Russian spy. So uh, the ball in your court, Tulsi Gabbard. Marcus Conte reporting.